Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about the carousel or orchid top pots, however you wanna call them. We are actually going to pot an orchid in it and talk a little bit more about them. I know there are many, many new viewers on my channel who don't actually know my initial videos on these pots, which were filmed, oh, I don't know, five, six years ago, many, many years ago. Orchid Top was actually the first brand that reached out to me to send me products. And I was so lucky because it is a super, super nice product that I really like. I've said this along the years many times. The problem is it is a very, very specific type of product and it doesn't always go with my environment, my orchid, my intentions and things of the sorts. So I always kind of try out something new with it in the hopes that it will be comfortable for me to work with it because I really like it. So to respect tradition, this year we are going to try a gongora orchid with this pot and i'll tell you why i'll also tell you more about these things i'll let you know where you can find them and with that said let's start so first of all if you didn't see my initial presentation on these pots from five years ago i will of course link it to you down below you will see this pot feature then as well because this is exactly the same pot so we can actually talk about the test of time and i can tell you guys that everything is in one piece it has been outside last year all summer long and the plastic is still okay so that is good to know so from this point of view they really are durable pots i'm not saying they cannot break of course they can maybe in even more years than this with repeated sun exposure they might break I don't know, but last year this guy was sitting outside with a Renancera in it and it's not falling apart just yet. But the thing that I like most about it is how appropriate it actually is for orchids. It is incredibly, incredibly airy. And that is very important for most orchids, specifically epiphytic orchids. Something like this would not necessarily be suited for terrestrial orchids or terrestrial plants in general, as you can see there is a lot of air passing through these little spikes. But for epiphytes, it is wonderful. There is, however, a downside to this. It can dry out the medium inside very, very fast. Because if you eliminate the tray and you pretend like the bottom is not all that solid, what you have here is actually a basket. It's a plastic basket. So the quantity of air moving around through this pot can be very similar to that of an open basket. Now, of course, that can be a good thing, particularly for those climates which might be very humid or rather intermediate to warm, not so hot. Those climates which don't have issues with water evaporation, actually, in the sense that they don't lose water all that fast, they can benefit a lot from this type of pot. This particular pot also has some hooks here. I think I lost the hanging mechanism, but it's okay. I can put whatever I want here. But you can opt for something that doesn't have hooks. But you can actually hang this if you want. However, me and open baskets don't go together all that well because I live in a subtropical climate. I do like to put some of the orchids that I have outside. And if I don't put them outside, I would like them to be in pots which can actually retain that water because I have a lot of ventilation in my grow room. Temperatures are pretty, pretty high in the nighttime. In the daytime, I do have an AC, but running it 24 seven, I'm, I can't afford it. <laughs> Luckily, my orchids are pretty okay with the temperature. However, water evaporation is just wild in my grow room. So something like this that looks a lot like an open basket is not necessarily super, super suited for many of my orchids. However, though, there are materials that can actually help with water retention. And here is where our little orchid comes into play. This is a Gongora orchid that I received, I think last year in an orchid swap with another YouTuber. I will link you to that video down below. And as you can see, it has been potted in just sphagnum moss and it has done great. The problem is now that the orchid is starting to grow outside of its pot. The roots are a little bit too crowded and that would be okay, but they just drink water way too fast. And even if I have only sphagnum moss here in the pot, it is very airy and it runs out of water very, very fast. It is time to repot it nonetheless. And I was thinking instead of going for the next size up with this pot, 
why don't I use the orchid top pot? And there is actually another reason for this. Gongoras create flower spikes that are pendant and sometimes, even though they don't actually create spikes in the medium, some of the flower spikes can actually get trapped by the rim of the pot and start to develop inside the medium. Case in which there is a high chance that the buds will rot, there is a lot of humidity there, they're obviously not going to develop, I'm gonna miss out on potential flower spikes. And the spikes, when they first appear, they're so, so tiny, it's really, really easy to miss them. So, since I need to rip out this orchid anyway, I will give this guy a go because flower spikes can definitely find their way out through the sides or actually the little spikes of this pot. As for the water retention situation, well, I'll be sure to stock up on moss in this pot. There is not enough moss that I can shove in the pot that will be enough to be honest. <laughs> I'm still considering using just a little bit of bark as well to maintain the airiness, but I don't know, I don't know about that. I might actually just go with pure moss and just bark on top to limit a little bit the algae formation. We'll see how it goes. First and foremost though, let's just make a little update on this orchid. If you remember the initial video, this orchid had some spotting on the pseudobulbs and a bit on the leaves, it had some dark spots. Well, they didn't really go away, but they didn't affect the orchid way too much either. So I'm not entirely sure what those were. Some of the pseudobulbs are now looking all that great and I will remove some of them and only keep the newest part of the orchid. Now the new growths that developed last year look pretty good. The pseudobulbs are large, but the leaves still have a little bit of pitting, a little bit of spotting. I don't really know what it is, to be fully honest. It might just be some sort of insect damage, maybe stress of getting adjusted to my climate. I don't want to think about other worse stuff because the orchid is very, very, very vigorous. So I'm not really worried right now. I want to see how this year's growth will look like because if this doesn't happen again, then I'm all good. This could even be a sort of deficiency. Who knows? It was not my orchid. I received it. I don't know its history. So this could be something from my environment or from the previous environment. The orchid doesn't really mind it though. So first and foremost, let us unpot the orchid. And you might think it's going to be difficult, but actually no. So I'm actually going to speed through this and come back when we're done. So here we are, I cleaned away the medium from the root system, removing sphagnum moss from roots, particularly from orchids which don't have fuzzy roots, is actually pretty easy because moss doesn't really stick to the roots, but it is time consuming if you have an orchid with thin roots and with a large root system, such as this one. So I took my time and I tried to save as many roots as possible, removed a few that weren't good anymore, and behold, the orchid split into two. But that's okay, I'll pot it together. I also have quite a lot of new roots sprouting, as we can see, perfect time for a repot. So for the medium, I will obviously go with sphagnum moss, but I will mix in just a little bit of bark as well, just to make sure that we don't have issues. And also there's the algae situation. Bark does not attract algae, but moss does. So I'm thinking something here. I'm thinking trying to put more bark at the edge of the pot and then more moss in the middle. I don't know if I will succeed with doing that, but it would be ideal to limit algae. So let's see if this works. I will of course first start with some sphagnum moss, which is just soaking now. Okay, should be okay. So I'll start with a sphagnum moss layer at the bottom. And this is because I will still use the tray as a sort of reservoir. I'll come back with this idea after we're done with the orchid to show you some pictures. So far, nothing remarkable, but here we go with the bark. And I think I'm gonna have to rearrange you. There we are. Okay, so I will arrange the orchid or the two orchid pieces so that I have the newest growths towards the outside and the oldest growths towards the inside because I want the orchid to have room towards the edges of the pot. If a few roots are starting to poke through the grills, that is okay. And here we go with the bark on the sides. Oh, another thing, if the bark pieces are not large enough, 
they will fall <laughs> through the grills. But that's okay, nothing is lost. And sphag the moss in the middle as much as possible. I'm not gonna shy away from adding moss. I will not hold back, but I will try to just keep it in the middle and on the sides, bark. And here is a view from afar. What I will do is save all of this bark. Now about the moss situation. As we can see, there is a little bit of moss. You can see it, but most of what you see is actually bark, isn't it? Well, that's what I want because in the middle, I know I have a core of moss. This root did not want to listen to me. So let's just see if I can put it back in the pot and there you go. Another good thing with this pot is that you can actually put back the roots. So all that's left now is to water the orchid. I don't think I need to stabilize it. I think it's okay. I'm not gonna keep it outside. It's not going to be windy. I'm not gonna move it around too much. So I don't think I wanna stake it, but I do wanna water it. Now let's address a little bit this moss core situation. Typically and usually, you will find people, growers, articles suggesting that you put bark in the middle and moss at the exterior. And this is to keep the interior a lot more airy. And that's perfectly fine. If your aim is to make things more airy, then that's what you should do. But if your aim is to make things more water retentive, then you need to do the reverse of that. And that's exactly what we did here. Because the beauty of knowing how to work with your setup is that you can customize it and do things that might seem like you're going against the grain and what some articles suggest, but you have to remember something. Articles are mainly done for beginners, for people who don't have a lot of experience. There's nothing wrong if you want to customize your setup to better suit your needs, because not all of our needs are identical. As I was saying, the needs with this orchid for me are for it to keep in as much water as humanly or orchidoply possible, right? So that's what I tried to do here. The bark, even though it's not necessarily essential in this setup, will help reduce the algae formation, which in my environment is off the roots. I can tell you that algae growth is much more prolific here than in my old environment in Romania. Now, watering. Let me show you how I will water. If you were to have a Phalaenopsis or maybe a Cattleya or other types of orchids in this pot, what you would need to do is water the orchid and then dump it out from the tray or tilt the pot to dump it out from the tray. The usual, just consider this a typical tray under a clear plastic pot. But if you know me, you know that I like to water in a different way because of my little situation with water evaporation. And the orchid top pot is actually perfect for my purpose. So when I'm gonna water my orchid, which is a little awkward because there is a camera between us, I will make sure that there is water in the tray and I'm not going to remove it because at the bottom we have a layer of sphagnum moss. So as a bottom layer, moss can actually wick all of the water you leave in the tray. I do have a video in which I talk more about the properties of different types of orchid media. If you missed it and you're interested, I'll link it down below in the description. And most of my collection works like this. It has a moss layer at the bottom. I always leave water in the tray. It always gets absorbed and then transmitted to all of the other moss pieces in the medium. Bark is there for fanciness, <laughs> pretty much. No, it's there for limiting algae but I don't really need bark. I need moss. That's my real hero in the setup. And this is what makes this setup work for me as well. So again, depending on what you want to happen, you can customize and arrange the setup however you want. If you're not working with water in the tray, there's no point to put moss there. You can put bark. And this is because bark is not water absorbent. It's not wicking. It will not do what the moss does. But then again, not all setups revolve around moss. So here is one of Jessica's orchids. It's a Phalaenopsis. She uses an orchid top pot with the ceramis mix, I think. I think it's kiwi bark and pieces of ceramis. When I received the orchid, the medium looked pretty fresh. There was no need for me to repot it and I didn't repot it. And things worked out very, very well. So even with a more traditional type of mix in which you don't necessarily leave water in the tray, but you just dump it out and where you don't actually have moss, 
It can work out, of course. Is it the most comfortable setup for me? No, it's not. And especially on a large scale with all of my orchids, it would not be the most comfortable for me. But having one orchid in this setup, it was absolutely okay. I did, however, leave some water in the tray because, hey, that's what you do in this climate. But as you can see, we have pieces of ceramics, we have bark, everything is okay. If you follow some basic rules, you can make pretty much any setup work. But knowing how to work with different setups, that can take a little bit more experience. So if you're a beginner and you want to test the pot out because you like it or you think it will benefit you, maybe first start with the traditional bark mixes that you can find in your area. It doesn't need to be the ceramics mixes and see how it goes. You have to have a baseline. See if it's too wet, if it's too dry, see how it interacts with your environment and with you. And then you can make a decision on improving it if it's necessary. Up until then, you cannot just guess what will end up working best for you. You just need to start from somewhere. And as for roots starting to escape the pot through these gaps or through the drainage holes, it's gonna happen just like it happens with any other type of orchid pot. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have a good root system inside the pot, some aerial roots or roots coming through the drainage that will snap or will not make it when you need to repot, it's fine. It's not gonna matter in the whole context of things. It might actually turn out to be easier to remove the roots from these gaps because these prongs are flexible, but really honestly, it doesn't matter as long as you have a good root system inside. Now, as far as I see, the orchid top pots are available throughout the world. I'll link it down below to some sources. I know Repotney has it in the USA, Amazon has it as well, Orchid Top has it as well. So there are various sources in which you can find them. The price is slightly prohibitive, so if you're thinking to get about 100 of these, I'm not sure if you're gonna like the price, but to have one or two, if you really, really like it, I think it's great. I personally really, really like it. That's why every year I wanna do something with it and I want to actually make it very comfortable. And I think I found one of the best orchids suited for it. And this is the Gongora just as suited would be Puffinias. By the way, these pots can come in three sizes as far as I remember and also various colors. So even if the orchid is smaller, you can actually find a smaller pot. They are not suited for orchids such as Stanhopias, which produce uh, flower spikes directly from the bottom of the pot because we still have a pretty full bottom there. But things that produce flower spikes from the sides, maybe even some Draculas can benefit from this shape. So yeah, I'll keep you up to date. Hopefully this spring my orchid will bloom as well. She has done okay. Again, I'm not sure what this could be, but we'll see this year what's gonna happen. She's definitely a lot stronger than she used to be. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video and you know the drill, like or dislike it below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, all sorts of orchid topics. Visit my second channel, Miss Orchid Girl 2, for other types of videos and follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well. It's always nice to keep in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye.